What you guys got another troubleshooting video here for you on how to check an AIO pump and make sure it's working okay. So I have a PC that I had built as a brand new PC. And again, we was having some issues with crashing and things like that. You can see the thermal paste was a bit dry. If you watch my part one video, this was a pretty dry bit of compound. And I was sort of suspect towards this and also the case itself with uh, airflow. So how will we tell whether this pump has failed and whether we've got a failed uh, all-in-one cooler here or closed loop water cooled system? I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot this and how to quickly test it. I've removed everything from the motherboard here. I've got it all on the bench. It's much easier to work on the bench here than it is inside a case. Got myself a little graphics card in here. Got the RAM, the CPU, all that was in the PC that was having issues. We're going to use that 1000 watt power supply here that we had in the system. I've reattached the uh, mounting points here so we can mount the actual pump onto the CPU here. I'm going to put some fresh compound on here. But before we do all of this, let me have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or a cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. You can use my promo code capital B capital R 9 and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount. And once you've submitted your order, you can use PayPal to pay for your purchase. They will then send you your key and you can then go ahead and get your version of Windows activated. OK, so what I'm going to do here is going to use some isopropanol alcohol. And this is just the alcohol which is dries very quickly, but it's going to allow me to clean the thermal paste off the bottom of this pump. You can see it's pretty dry and that was the first telltale sign of something that wasn't right with the setup because the CPU was pretty dry too and this was a brand new build. So something was causing that to dry out there and when I checked the back panel it was getting really hot. So I didn't know whether the actual pump had failed or whether there was some sort of uh, starvation of air inside the case itself because it is quite a small case. And we have some pretty high end parts in here that do get pretty hot. So I've cleaned all this off. I mean, you can spend more time cleaning it up. I'm just going to test this and put a bit of compound on the actual CPU here. We're going to use an MX4 here and apply that to the CPU here. You can apply it how you like. Just going to put a little blob here on the center part and then we'll mount the actual pump here. Now, troubleshooting an all in one system like this is pretty straightforward, it's not that difficult. I prefer to do everything outside the case. I really was trying to avoid taking everything out. But at the end of the day, it needed rebuilding again. And I need to find out what bits are good and what bits are bad. I'm just going to quickly put the pump onto the pump header on the motherboard here. And once we've done this, I will mount the pump in the correct uh, order here. I just need to make sure the label is around the right way here. And uh, I need to just get this into position so I can get the pump on. So I've already got the mounting uh, screws there. I'm just going to quickly mount this and then screw this back down. And once I've done this, I can then put the fans together and then put them onto the CPU header on the board to get, make sure the fans are spinning at the correct speeds. So I'll hold this in position while I get the thumb screws uh, tightened up here. And once I've done that, I can tighten these up with a screwdriver uh, to they just about bite, and then that should be good enough. So let's go ahead and just get them finger tight first, and I'll finish off the other four screws and then we can tighten them up with a screwdriver. I'm just going to go ahead and just nip these up a little bit more. There we go. And that's now done. So I've tightened all four of these down and I've already got the pump plugged into the pump header on the board. And now I've also plugged in the fan onto the CPU header on here or the CPU optional on here. Now I've also got the uh, cardboard boxes here just to rise the radiator off the floor so it allows airflow to run through and what we're going to do here now is quickly power this up and we'll see how it goes uh, hopefully everything works okay and uh, once we've done this we'll be able to check to see whether the pump is functioning okay okay so we've now got the pc turned on and powered on so how do we know the pump is working well first signs is we can quickly have a look at the pump itself now the pump is pumping liquid through over the CPU here to cool it. It's basically in a repeat cycle. It goes up one tube, goes through the radiator, gets cooled, and then comes back down and passes over the CPU, which then cools it. So basically, this hot liquid 
returns through the tubes uh, all the way up to the radiator, gets cooled down with the fans blowing through the radiator. You should see or feel a slight vibration coming through the tubes, and that is the liquid being pumped through the actual tubing. So if you don't feel anything and it's completely dead here, then the liquid is not being pumped round, which is a telltale sign that the actual uh, liquid is not being passed through the radiator. Through here, you shouldn't have super hot uh, air blowing through here because obviously it's being cooled down, uh, being dissipated through the radiator and all the fins where the fans are blowing through the radiator to cool it down. And once it's been cooled down uh, enough, it comes back down as cool and passes straight back over the CPU again. In rough terms, that's basically what's happening. So if there's no water or liquid being pumped around, that you won't feel the vibration in those pipes. And that's a quick telltale sign to find out whether the pump is working correctly or not. And once you've done this, you can next boot into the BIOS. And this will happen very quickly. You get into the BIOS and you can see the fan profile here. We can see the CPU fan is spinning. That is the fans on the radiator that are spinning round. When it's idle, the revs per minute will be low. And as you put more taxing tasks on the computer, that will spin up a little bit higher. Also, the all-in-one pump is working. You can see that fluctuating up and down. That's working perfectly fine. And if we look up the top here, the CPU temperature and the voltage and everything else is listed up the top. Motherboard temperatures and CPU, you can see it's 47 Celsius. Now, we're only in the BIOS and we are running idle. Nothing is happening to the system. So the next step will be to go to the desktop and run some tests to make sure that everything is working OK when it's put under load. Uh, if it works OK under load and the temperatures stay where they are and they're OK, then the system should be working perfectly fine. If we start getting crashing or the pump starts to drop or anything like that, then we've got a problem and we can check a little bit further. So let's go ahead and what we'll do is we'll boot up to the computer now the desktop and we'll do some more extensive tests there but all in all as right now it looks pretty good which tells me that the case was causing the problem with very poor airflow and probably way too much heat getting built up inside the case now if the pump is not working the cpu is going to get super hot which is then going to heat up the liquid and the liquid is going to get heated up all around the place and it will then start to crash the computer Temperatures will start to rise because the liquid is not cooling down. You will then start feeling a lot of temperatures uh, building up as well. So looking at the desktop here, we're going to run Prime 95. This is something I couldn't run before, and we're going to be giving this another test. And again, it's outside of the computer, which is the exact place I want it. I don't want it inside the case because uh, I know there's an issue there, and I wanted to make sure that it's working perfectly fine outside. So I already got an idea that it's going to be an issue with the case here, and I'll explain that a little bit later on. So you can see the physical memory is going uh, to its maximum here. We can also see the CPU temperatures climbing, and this is pretty normal uh, for a Ryzen 7000 series. They're, they're meant to be running at 95 Celsius for the lifetime of that chip. And if you don't believe me, you can check out uh, AMD's uh, tweet they've already mentioned the fact that that is exactly what that chip is meant to do and you can see here i'll show you a bit later on once this gets a little bit more toasty we're running uh, the uh, prime 95 here i'll leave this running for a little while until we find out what's going on so coming down a little bit further we've getting no thermal throttle in here so it's not causing any issues and we are running under full load and i'll come down a little bit further and you should now see down here the actual pump here to make sure the pump rev per minutes are working perfectly fine. You can see the pump is working perfectly fine. It's fluctuating up and down how it should be because it's pumping liquid around. And we also have that CPU uh, fan spinning at 1004 revs per minute. So they are working perfectly fine as well. Now I'll leave this test running for 15 minutes and see uh, how it goes and to make sure there is no issues here because as the time goes on, things will get a little bit hotter and we'll just leave this running for a little bit longer just to make sure everything is working the way it should be. Uh, because this is what I'm trying to do is re-replicate the issue that I was having. And again, if things start to get a little bit warm, then it's going to crash. Now, if this was inside the case, 
obviously things are going to start to get a little bit toasty inside that case there. And again, I can guarantee you it will crash because that's exactly what was happening. So we know the pump is fine and we know that the all-in-one cooler is working perfectly fine. Now, a bunch of people did mention about the temperatures, and this is pretty normal. If you read the tweet here from AMD, they said Ryzen 7000 series is designed for a lifetime at 95 Celsius. And it says that breaks convention and also, but temperatures do not uh, correlate to the heat production uh, by the CPU. So you can read the full article is up there on Twitter, and you can also read that information on their website. So here we are. Everything has turned out OK. Uh, I've left this running and I can safely say that there is no issues here. There's no big major problems with this as it is right now. So that points the finger towards the actual case itself that was causing the problem. And this is one of the biggest problems I have with some case reviews that people will just have a look at the case and point out a few things. And sometimes they might put some uh, parts in there and say, there you go, really easy to build in, looks great. But they're not actually testing it. And there was a lot of people that did the same thing with this actual case here. And I watched a few reviews and I thought, that's exactly what I want. I want something small and compact where I can put a big graphics card in there and put an all-in-one in there. And basically, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Of course, later down the line, you run into some issues. This is one of them right here. I think they say they're one millimeter, which is really, really small. And what was happening, the radiator fans were blowing through the radiator and trying to go through these little holes. And it, the whole panel was just getting really hot to the touch. You couldn't hardly touch it. It was getting that hot. And it was because it couldn't dissipate the heat through these little tiny holes. And because the heat couldn't pass through the radiator and outside the case, it was getting caught in the radiator making the radiator getting really hot. And this was heating up the whole side panel here, really unbearable heat on this. And this was what was causing the major problem. And this airflow is the same on the front of the case. You can see on their website here, ultra fine performance mesh. Now, because of this mesh is so small, it can't dissipate the heat through that. And it was also causing the rad to get hot, which is then getting the CPU hot. And then all the buildup inside the case was causing a major problem. So this is the problem when you do a review of cases when you're not actually using a computer. You would never know any of this stuff. It all just looks great on paper. But when you actually put it into practice, you can actually see there's an issue. So you can see here, this is the optimal uh, layout for this installation. And that's how I had mine. I had the radiator right there, which was also a Fantex radiator inside there, which I went with a Fantex case and also uh, set it up just like this as you can see here now again okay, air's going in the front and it's getting robbed out straight away by the uh, radiator and then it's getting stuck by not getting pushed through those little tiny mesh vents there and this is what was causing an issue we had a rtx 4070 ti in here which they recommend and again it was causing major problems and crashing the pc now, I went with the optimal setup, which was recommended on their website, which is just like this. Apart from you can either have the GPU standing up or lying down. If you have it standing up, you lose the exhaust fan at the back rear. And again, if you have it standing up also with this particular card, you won't be able to have any fans along the bottom, but it will give you a bit of ventilation there. So with a big card like this, you are limited. And again, that they are saying that this case was designed for free bay cards just like this one and again uh, it, it all sounds great in theory until you put it into practice which i've done and again it's not been that successful for me and that is the problem when people do case reviews they're obviously sometimes getting sent these products and they're reviewing them and again you can read the blurb off the website and actually tell you what is exactly in the case you can do that yourself on the website unless you're really putting a pc in it and actually testing it for a period of time and having a good idea of what it's like to uh, build in it and actually use it, then that information is not going to be useful for you because most of the people that I watch with this were all giving it high praise. And of course, none of these uh, channels have probably actually used it in a real life scenario like I did. And then I've run into issues. So I pretty much got it right from the beginning. I had a good idea that it was causing an issue with the heat there. Uh, but other than that, your experience with this case might be different because you have different hardware. So bear that in mind. 
Anyway, I hope this video has been useful. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.